You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Venazzi, and Mark the Greasy Meatball, Sebastian from optionfit.com. Welcome back to the Option Block and this very special live edition here from Smith & Walensky's in scenic and sunny downtown Chicago. If you've ever been down here, you know it's a great place to eat steak and also talk about uh, some options here as we crash the annual Option Pit live, what do you call this, client seminar, client it's, it's gathering? The, it's the Pro Trader Summit. The Pro Trader Summit. We crash the live Pro Trader Summit and record a little bit of live uh, live options fun at the same time. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com as well as, of course, from the ever-expanding, ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. No shortage of places for you guys to find all of that great content, including the mothership, the flagship, theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, uh, all your favorite podcast providers, iTunes, TuneIn, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is AHA Mobile AHA one of those? AHA Mobile could indeed be listed as one of those. <laughs> or, of course, you could get it via our mobile app available for iOS, Android, and the Fire OS. And that, that squeaky voice to my left is none other than the greasy meatball himself, Mr. Mark Sebastian. Mark, thank you for inviting us once again to your annual client shindig bash well, call it what you will it's always it's always a pleasure getting together with uh, everybody you know a lot of these guys became aware of option pit because of options insider radio oh, so you're blaming me is that that is it my yeah. fault <laughs> and so it's only natural that you know since we have to do it on a thursday anyway why not uh, get the get the game together and uh, have a couple of cold ones or in this case a delicious cabernet and uh, and and do a podcast. There are certainly worse things to do on a Thursday afternoon, and it makes it ever so special because to your left, we're all in the same room, which is a rare treat. Uh, the Rock Lobster himself, not beaming in from the hinterlands of Maine today, but instead beaming in from about three feet to my left. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program to you as well. Uh, you know what? It's funny is I'm still one of the farthest ones away. Yes. <laughs> Somehow it still worked out that way. Somehow Mark always edges you out there, pushes you down to the to the edge of the table. They I actually just don't want to be between you and him when you guys are doing this show. We'll it's a work. dangerous spot. Well, you know, and I like to offset his stink with your stink. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so There's a lot of love in this the room. The rabbit <laughs> hole is already... There's a lot of love in this room today. And joining us to our left are a couple of special guests. You may know them from their a couple of appearances on Volatility Views. This is their first time actually uh, coming in on the old Option Block program. Uh, they are Matt and Mike. The uh, what's your titles over there? Co-founders, co-principals, or uh, yeah, we're uh, trading principals at Typhon. Trading Capital. principal, Matt and Mike Thompson, trading principals over there at Typhon Capital. Welcome to the Option Block program. Glad you can join us in this little bit more more raucous environment than usual here, but still fun. Uh, glad you can make it to the program. Congrat Welcome on. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. And why don't you go ahead and give our listeners a little bit of an overview of what it is you guys do for those of you who haven't those of them out there who haven't caught your appearances on Vol Views. But uh, for Typhon Capital, we run a uh, volatility CTA, so specialized in trading VIX futures and some VIX index options over the top of those futures. I've uh, been doing that for the past couple of years for Typhon and since uh, 2011 for client money. So uh, specialized in the vol space. There we go. All right. And without further ado, let's dive right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. 
All right, and welcome to the Trading Block. This is indeed the portion of the program where we break down what was moving, what was shaking in today's markets. A lot of stuff lighten it up. We are recording it a little bit later uh, than usual today, which gives us a little bit of uh, some added perspective. Uh, I think we can maybe even just dive right on into some of the fun stuff that was lighting it up uh, after the close today. Of course, we are still in the teeth of uh, earnings season, and there were a few names that were poised to perhaps move today uh, after the close. Uh, we'll start things off. The one that was really lighting it up today, uh, good old LinkedIn, uh, one of the ones on the on the social media train. We saw Twitter, of course, moving and shaking a little bit earlier this week. LinkedIn uh, closing today right around 223 or so. Uh, that straddle going out right around a little over 25 bucks. They're pricing in a little over 11% move, and so far that seems to be that little bit of extra premium that everyone's kind of kind of squeeze it into the markets these days. I was talking to a few market makers recently, who, the few guys who are still left uh, making markets and equity options. I was asking them, I was like, really, what's it been like the last few weeks? Like, how much extra premium after Google? And they're like, oh, we just... We just widened everything out completely because you can only take, you can only sell a $21 Google straddle so many times before uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. Uh, so you're seeing a little bit of that premium starting to squeeze into things like LinkedIn, and it actually was merited. So far in the after hours when I last checked, they were up uh, to about 250, up about 22 half up there. So pretty much right in line with a, actually a little bit less than what they were pricing in for the straddle, but there still is some time to roll. Well, you guys, I know you guys had a lot of busy events in your various uh, day planner today. Did you guys have a chance to? Uh, Look over any of these uh, earnings names and you know talk we about were them. we were t we spent a lot of time talking about Facebook uh, yesterday, and uh, you know the Facebook the earnings came out. I was like, yeah, this is great. And then because I I you know I'd gone on public record saying that I thought it was going to go straight through through to a hundred, <laughs> only to have it down five dollars. Welcome to my world. <laughs> and uh, and but you know it was an interesting day because you know opened up down about four or five bucks to kind of rally all the way back. Kind of a weird day in general. Um, you know, the S&P opened down, got really ugly for a couple of minutes, and then turned on a dime. Uh, I made my official up on the day call, and it went higher. Um, you know, that, that was kind of what I saw. But LinkedIn, not one I was looking at as much. Um, you know, I, I, anybody out here, was anybody here trading LinkedIn earnings? Oh, yeah? Oh, really? All right, we got a LinkedIn trader. Long, short, what, are you, what, did, what, did you, what were you doing? Oh, oh well, nice. There you go. So, I'm smiling. Yeah. Din dinner's, on, dinner's on him tonight then. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well dinner's done. the clients. Awesome. Good. Go That's me. Good. <laughs> well, yeah, aside from that, what, anything else catch your eye in, in today's activity that was, uh, that was light? I know you guys are kind of busy. You know, just, just I mean, uh, you know, we had uh, Dominic Salvino talk uh, later in the afternoon. Let me guess. He talked about VIX. Well, he's the DPM of VIX. <laughs> so, um, and Andrew went down just to make sure. Andrew went down just to make sure that he was uh, able to uh, to still talk. And Andrew, what was he what was he doing when you went down there? Oh, he was playing. Um, it, it was a very it was a very complex Vic strategy. Vic strategy. No, no, no. Wait a minute. He was playing Sudoku. <laughs> 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 that that just that just shows you the confidence of the guy running the most the, volatile product yeah. in the world is playing Sudoku at five minutes to three. But don't tell anybody I said that. You know, speaking of VIX, we've got a couple of resident VIX experts here. Very rarely are there people in the room that understand and trade VIX as well as I do. But uh, <laughs> when we've got <laughs> when we've got uh, when we've got Team Thompson in the room, I I, I, I take a seat. So uh, what, what what happened in the in the in on the VIX side of things today? All we did was trade the Sebastian bottom. So we, 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 you, know, you, you called it, right. we positioned, and guess what? We made money. <laughs> right. Right. The VIX axe, Sebastian. It's so easy how that works out. Also, uh, my, our clients can also attest to this. So we're, uh, we're having our, uh, our, you know, our event and the speakers in one of the uh, conference rooms right adjacent to the floor. Literally, you know, you're looking down at the trading floor, and... Did we have trouble trying to hear the speakers, or what kind of noise was coming out of the trading floor today? There was crickets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think, I mean, and then when we went up on the day, like Mark, but there was like, well, there was 30 seconds of trade. 
Like, all of a sudden, they were lifting some books because we're rallying, and then yeah. Mark had to say he was right again, and everything went quiet. So that was... So. Yes, that was the day. It's kind of sad if this is their first impression of the SIBO to see it like this and, you know, the in its waning later, you know, later years when most of the equities, and it's not all of them, are pretty much shuttered. Uh, there's VIX, there's SPX, there's a couple others out there, and that's really about it. It must have been kind of a, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a shock for some of you who haven't seen it before to yeah. see it such a, uh, a shadow of its former self. It, uh, it's like my dad trying to explain how pretty Ann Margaret used to be. <laughs> that, that's a dated reference even for you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> but it was clean. Usually you stick to the 80s. It was clean. It was, it was. Usually at least stick to like a couple of the recent decades, not, uh, not back to the hey, 60s. Anne Margaret was really, really pretty back in the day. Back I don't in know the if day, you guys she know. Had, she had so was Sophia Loren. It's still not bad looking, actually. <laughs> Um, this is why you have so many this female is, students. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> the show, I feel, is slipping away from our yes, hands. Let me, as let we me speak. grab it back. This is what I get having Mark live with a drink in his hands. Um, we also had Electronic Arts, EA. I know, Andrew, you like to pay attention to the gaming sector every now and then. And uh, EA lightened it up a little bit today. They were going out, I think they closed about 70, a little over 72 bucks. They were pricing in about a $4.5 move, which works out to a little bit over 6%. Uh, this one being one of the few kind of uh, resounding mess of the season so far, down about 80 cents. So that four and a half bucks they were pricing in, uh, a lot of that seems to have gone away so far. We'll still have to see if we can get uh, updated pricings on that. But wasn't a heck of a lot really uh, lighting it up out there so far. You know, speaking of lighting it up, you know, Matt and Mike, we have a listener question about this later, but maybe I'll just get to it now because it is kind of top of mind. Uh, we've talked a little bit on Ball Views recently. Kind of the biggest thing happening out in that neck of the woods, and certainly for you guys, has been the, the introduction uh, of the VIX Weekly Futures it's only, but we only have, not that we got about a week or so under our belts now. Uh, but so far, what's your take on this product? Is it compelling to you? Is it interesting? Have you tried it? Have you traded it yet? Or are you still playing wait and see? Kind of what, what's the take there? Yeah, I mean, certainly interesting to us, and it will be part of our toolkit. Uh, we have not traded it as of yet. Our uh, actually front end vendor for our execution is not going to roll them out until mid September. They're waiting for some uh, software upgrade, but. I think when we're looking at it, uh, it's off to a far better start than the VXST products, <clears throat> which um, not a high hurdle to overcome on that. <coughs> but I think it's interesting that it populates kind of an intramonth curve, um, and we're curve traders. So to us, there's like curve versus curve uh, trades or potential trades to be put on, far more opportunities for different spreads. And, you know, we do like spreads as often as possible. So high hopes, and I think it's off to a good start, obviously super early. So you're, you're impressed with the volume so far? I think that's kind of what you were expecting. Yeah, I traded uh, 220 contracts today. I'm just looking at it on the SIBO website. So that's that's off to a, probably the best start mm -hmm. since VIX, you know, regular settlement VIX futures. That's true. Certainly better than VXST. That though. might be yeah. more than VXST ever traded. Yeah, no, they had yeah. total if, you, if you look, all VXST, <laughs> yeah. they had like one one brief spark of life right after they listed because they had so much you know sturm and drang going into it. Oh, this thing's coming. This thing's coming. Short term VIX, and then it. It, it sputtered, sputtered for about a week, and that was kind of about it. Um, <coughs> Sounds a lot like my love life. <laughs> uh, good thing yeah, your show, wife, show's good over. Thing, good thing your wife isn't here to, yeah, uh, to hear you know, this. You know, it was an interesting thing. Uh, we, we asked uh, Dominic about this when we were down on the floor. One of the nice things is when you come to the Option Pit Pro Professional Trader Conference, we, we bring in front of the, the best, the brightest, and, and really the insiders. And what Dom was saying was he thinks – and what he's hearing from a lot of the, the buy side customers on, on the VIX weeklies is they want to see an orderly settle, and then they might trade it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, Look, just to see how the first couple settles go. Um, even on the, you know, the VIX monthly regular contract settles have been far more calm over the last year and a half. Um, so I think it gives people more confidence in the product and sort of the institutional applicability. We haven't seen the, the raft of carpet bombing yet in like in the VIX <laughs> weekly puts to move it by a move it by seven handles prior to settlement. Uh, but you're right, I'm hearing a lot of things like similar to what you're saying too about a lot of vendors just having it's a lot of logistical niggling details that are holding people back from trading if they don't have it in their software and their platform or whatever yet. So that probably is part of the reason why it's it's not you know. Uh, cranking out a ridiculous amount too uh, and also i think a lot of people are also still playing wait and see for the options that of course is where a lot of a lot more broad mass appeal has the potential yeah to although i'm hearing those are going to be a while that's what you were saying yeah the so uh the the and and talking to you know just just talking to SIBO sources they're shooting for um kind of the fall and there are people that aren't even sure whether that's going to happen but uh you know that'll really immediately drop some liquidity into the into the weeklies, and it'll be a lot of a lot of fun. 
Yeah, that's a shame because there's all people out there who are listening and saying, well, they, they don't want to trade futures. It's, it's going to be your only, only option, pun intended, until uh, they finally get the, the back room stuff worked out. And on, why on wouldn't you want to trade futures options. on VIX? Why? Why not? Ah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, Sling them. Why wouldn't you want to kick that can on the on the VIX futures? I actually, for most people, I think you should just leave it to the Typhon guys. Let, let them, <laughs> just let them trade them for you. It's a lot. It's a, It'll be a lot easier. Term for you structure. Who wants to deal with that? Who just wants go, the term go structure? Go work your day job. Can tango backward? Who cares? Yeah. Um, Another thing's lighting it up today. Of course, we had Whole Foods uh, lighten it up to the downside. People, it's amazing. People finally realize Whole Foods charges a heck of a lot. <laughs> it seems everyone seemed to have, have awakened to this fact uh, today when they said, you know, we charge maybe a little more than people people expect, and that weighed heavily on their on their earnings. This name does about fourteen thousand contracts a day, doing over eighty thousand today, lighting it up to the downside as people are saying, wait a minute, we don't really want to shop there anymore, uh, and so now they're they're starting to spin off this new thing aimed. At I guess at millennials called 365. It's going to be a cheaper version uh, of Whole Foods. That's what they plan to, to save themselves. I don't uh, know if I buy that. But, uh, well, you don't Mo- buy it literally because no one's going to Whole no, Foods No, what, the, what a Whole Foods should do is follow, because millennials are so lazy. Um, I'm really glad. If I was one year younger, I'd be a millennial. Um, but I'm <laughs> technically not. And uh, the uh, you know there's all these new services like where they literally develop, de- de- they charge you like, 10 bucks a person and they deliver you the meal but you have to cook it yourself and i'm like why not just order carry out i mean it's the same thing but uh those that's like the new trendy service is like we're gonna mike we're gonna deliver you an uncooked steak a potato that you have to cut yourself and some vegetables that you have to cut yourself yeah and a recipe card sounds great (laughs) only 15 bucks a person (laughs) And have you seen those uh, organic uh, vending machines around too? Yeah, my wife. My wife. <laughs> I saw, she's yeah, addicted. I saw, right. I saw, or my wife talked about some of her uh, salad in a jar postings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, salad in a jar vending they, machine. They have one in the building next to us. I, I was laughing about that the how, other day. How did someone Mark marry her? One right in front of did, us. <laughs> can you imagine Mark eating salad in a jar? It just is. It's just. I don't know how that happens. Well, no. I well, I eat, I eat pasta in a jar. Why I wouldn't mean, I? Eat? I could see him doing it when properly compensated. <laughs> that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Speaking of proper, perhaps improper uh, compensation, Andrew, you'll find this interesting. People are always writing into us because we do a lot of the uh, unusual activity stuff. That guy wrote in last week saying, what can you get in trouble for, you know, if you followed our trades? And people are always asking, what is the... What is the line? Where is the blurry line of what is insider trading, what is not? Well, if uh, some of these recent uh, things going on with the Department of Justice and Supreme Court go through, it may get a lot broader and a lot, uh, a lot easier for some of our listeners uh, to pile in. The Department of Justice right now is uh, petitioning, I guess, a, 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 a decision that came out of the, out of the uh, appeals court before. Thank you very much. Uh, that essentially narrowed dramatically what can be considered as insider trading. In fact, they even overturned uh, a deal that was happening earlier with some hedge fund guys, uh, essentially because they pr- didn't have any information that they knew that the people they were giving them, they had essentially said they didn't have direct knowledge that the person was acting on insider information. So they're saying, under the ruling, a person must have direct knowledge of an insider doling out the tips and know that he or she was in the wrong to be convicted of insider trading. Uh, the court said the governor, government must also prove that the tippee knows the tipper receives some sort of benefit in exchange for the information provided. So under this, that's a pretty broad uh, mandate. I, you know what I think this is? I think that we could rename this the Cuban rule. This is, this um, is, after Mark Cuban fighting the, uh, yeah. the DOJ and all this stuff. But I don't Maybe. know. This sounds like a license to front run. All I know um, is options oddities might get a lot more exciting. Yeah, like, more exciting. oh, wow, 80,000 yeah. of those. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if people aren't afraid of, if people really aren't afraid of being insider trading, and usual activity is going to matter a lot more. But it's, uh, it's, I'll tell you, this, this is, I, I hate insider trading more than just about anything on the planet. It's cost me. You said lots payment of money, for order flow. Lot, it goes payment <laughs> for order flow, insider trading, uh, cats, in that order. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna hate it Sorry. a lot. You're gonna hate it a lot more because it's gonna be a lot easier for people yeah, to do and, it and get and away with it. Salad in a jar, <laughs> yeah. in a jar is fourth. So and p- then, uh, so the and people, then, who, and people then who listen, riding, riding a CTA bus is fifth. The pe- people who listen who are worried about getting picked up in some insider trading dragnet because they trade on the odd block, uh, they, okay. don't, they don't have to worry anymore. It's even the guys who are doing it 
are, are skirting on now, this. And you, re- you can speak to this, too. I mean, you saw this all the time. How many times did we get picked off at oh, 259, someone lifting 10,000, you know, out-of-the-money calls from Goldman or whatever yeah, the case Yeah, Kevin Kennedy comes running in, yeah. KGK, and... Says, oh, I need to buy these calls. Next thing you know, it's a deal stock. It was always ogre for me, but yeah, it was about this half yeah. dozen one six the other. Any, any uh, anything on spoofing that, that came out of that DOJ ruling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing yet, but uh, you know, you guys over there at Typhon, I know when we were talking last uh, a while back when things were a little bit quieter out there in the VIX term structure, you were saying you're starting to look a little bit farther afield to some other products uh, to play some other types of vol term structure. Did you ever turn your, your gaze over there, the commodity side, in particular oil? It's kind of been, it was lighting it up for a while, then it kind of, the vol started coming off, now some vol maybe creeping back in. Uh, oil taking it on the chin again today, uh, WTI headed for its Biggest, biggest monthly fall so far in a year. Uh, Brent's got a pretty much a six-month uh, trough that it's in. Uh, it's hitting 40-month lows, some of these products. So a lot of uh, a lot of action out there. Have you guys ever looked or dabbled in the commodities out there at all? Yeah, certainly looked at it. And, uh, you know, recently we've seen a lot of inbound interest in um, anything we can do in Chinese vol, Chinese equity vol, obviously given their large realized vol over there. <laughs> And there's, uh, you know, been rumors or rumblings of uh, <clears throat> some sort of SIBO Chinese VIX future product out of Singapore. So, you know, we'd love to see something come online like that. The problem with the oil vol futures contract is kind of trades by appointment only. Right. Uh, so it's <laughs> difficult to build a product around that and to even, like, test it, get <coughs> tick data and all that kind of things you need to, to do research on. So certainly interested in it. Um, you know, you need to see the market mature more. Well, you know, they've got it. So... Do they, they've got VIX indexes on like FXI, are there, but like V-Stocks is actually like a, trades in Europe. Yeah. Are they talking about bringing a like, you know, what would you call it? You call it. Uh, so license the methodology to, out, of, out of the to Sing like exchange. The Hang Sang or to, yeah, so to, there, there's Hang Sang VIX and there, you know, Vinke. And do they have that? Uh, there's, What's it called? There's Hang Sang VIX and then Japan VIX is the Vinke. Oh, so there's futures. V I K N Y. Do they trade? I mean, by appointment only. It's pretty thin. Um, the one we're interested in that we've heard about is a SIBO methodology, Chinese VIX future based out of the Singapore exchange. Out of Singapore? Yeah. That would make sense to not do it in, in China. Well, they did just announce that, they would make that it joint illegal. educational uh, initiative, so maybe that'll start. Yeah, uh, start <laughs> you know, that, yeah that's what we're hoping so far. It's all rumors, nothing concrete. That'd be kind of neat. Mm-hmm. And based on the Singapore exchange, you don't have to get like the uh, quotas to trade nay shares and that, or uh, you know, Renimbi and that kind of thing. Right. So. Right. I was just talking with the Eurex guys the last week. They were all in town, and they were saying that this has kind of been a bit of a turning point for them in terms of V stocks, because you might imagine uh, the you know the eurozone meltdown of late, a lot of eyes turning a little bit farther afield, something that correlates a little bit closer to that vol, and so all of a sudden they're getting a lot more inquiries. Because the one thing we've heard a lot of people is like, you know, the futures do all right, the options not so much, and even still, the two of them are you know distant seconds to you know the big mothership, the VIX product over there. But they're hoping that you know now with this latest kind of flurry of interest that's kind of going to be the catalyst to really make V-Stocks maybe going forward uh, a, a reliable second alternative for people who want to do a little bit more specific volume or, or just a little another, another product to trade at the end of the day. Yeah, I did see uh, a press release recently from, from uh, Eurex that uh, V-Stocks derivatives just had their all-time uh, monthly volume record. So I think there is interest turning that way. Yeah, so you know, that's another one for you guys. You guys eventually going to run a... Uh, a you know, if at what's the turning point to to build a new volume, a vol to be, what kind of volume do you need to run the kind of produce approach on, like VIX, or you know V stocks? Yeah, you want to run like a respectable size book in European vol. You know, you're going to need to see at least a hundred thousand VIX equivalents. So remember, the V stocks is a mini compared to the VIX contract. Yeah, why, so why did they do that? Any idea? I think the original thought was it would drive more volume. Um, you know, and a volume the institutional loves that yeah. little bite-sized contract. Because <laughs> like the minis, yeah, when, when, <laughs> how the mini <laughs> options work. Yeah. Yeah. The, the VIX, the VIX mini futures <laughs> never traded. Mini, um, mini price full commission. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Recipe for just genius. Yeah, so you know, you'd probably need to see the volume pick up by, you know, another two to three times before you could fit like a full program in there. If you're thinking of running like a fifty million dollar book in there. Okay. So it's getting, it, you know, it's getting closer, and uh, it's not the V stocks 
uh, options were not tradable here uh, for U.S. residents. So there, you know, there's <clears throat> CFTC hasn't approved those contracts as far as I know anyway. Mm -hmm. So that would help if they were U.S. tradable by U.S. residents. Yeah, what do they call it when you get the speed enough to get out of uh, the atmosphere? Escape uh, velocity. Escape velocity. But do, do you feel like the VSTOX futures have gotten through escape velocity? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, for sure. Without a doubt, uh, you know, it's, it's right there. Um, it's over the event horizon, if that's like oh, another nice. space term. <laughs> nice. Keep it going. Yeah. Well, eventually they'll hit warp speed. Right. All right. Will right. it cross the Kármán line? No, well, I don't know. That's, a totally that's pretty place. deep. Um, <laughs> speaking of commodities, we have to hit it too because gold is just uh, taking. We, we love our outlandish predictions here. I'm not sure if you saw this today. Some guys coming out today uh, predicting gold. 350 an ounce. Wow. Uh, pretty soon and getting a lot of ink uh, for doing it, as you might expect. Uh, have you guys looked uh, looked at all at beyond uh, oil to things like the precious metals and stuff like that? I mean, certainly these days, a little bit of action out there. Not so much previous, but these days, it's starting <laughs> to light it up a little bit. Yeah, without a doubt, gold has been, uh, well, crazy amount of realized vol. Hmm. Um, we wish those um, GVZ GVC. futures would yeah. trade more. <laughs> You know, especially being a CTA, you know, we're regular on the CFTC side, so to trade GLD options to capture vol is not in our toolkit. And so we'd love to see those futures trade more. You know, we could build, like, a global macro vol book if those things traded more. Still but, one of my uh, favorite debates you know, we ever had on the show was me, you, and Jared, you guys arguing that GVZ futures did not exist. And I said, they exist. They've never and traded they in do. the they history do. of recorded man, but they do exist. You know, we it, couldn't it, find a print. I'm looking I, I, on the SIBO <laughs> website right now. I don't see... Uh, oil, gold, or yeah, it's not them. even listed. None now. Of them. Yeah. None of them. So the interesting thing with GVZ is I thought those were going to be an absolute hit. I think everyone did. It was yeah. And then you've got to realize who's buying gold? Stupid people. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a blanket. And, and, right. you know, I mean, not, not all stupid people. Peter but Schiff on line <laughs> one. With all, with, all, with all due respect to Steve Forbes. Um, with all due respect to Steve Forbes. I mean, you look at it, the people that are really interested in gold, are they the type of people that are like, well, I'm buying gold because I think the world, I think mm -hmm. the world's going to end, have so you, I'm have totally going to trade in, in, in a huh. volatility yeah. future. Have you ever watched the A-Team? Do you know who Mr. T is? I do. He's buying gold. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. That was B, as I recall, that was B.A. Baracus. Do not bet against not Mr. T. T. <laughs> he consumed half of the world's supply right there. What's left <laughs> yeah, for anyone yeah. else? Uh, yeah, according to this guy, his reason he his his extreme analysis Where is it going to? Uh, 350 an ounce. He, he gets into what you were talking about before. It's too pricey as an inflation hedge the way it is right now, uh, and so therefore it has to drop to 350, uh, which is interesting in and of itself. I just like I like throwing out extreme predictions because well, I know it, it I know does, it sets you off. It provides no insurance uh, insurance value. I mean, look what it did here in Greece. It just sold off during Greece. It's a mediocre inflation hedge. Uh, no yield. No yield. Yeah. Well, um, it's negative real interest it's, rates, it's, I suppose, it, maybe. It's heavy. You have to carry it. <laughs> like, 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 uh, you ever felt a brick of gold? It weighs the amount of a brick. All right? It's not light. And so I, I just think, I, you know, I don't, I, I obviously, I was kidding when I said people that invest in gold are stupid. But I just think people invest in gold are paranoid and they're not going to be the type of so you're so not stupid. You're paranoid. Sales of um, your, your gold course yeah. just fell off a cliff. Yeah. Sir. So, no, investing in a gold membership, brilliant. <laughs> investing in gold bars, not the best idea. Well, if, you're, if, you're looking, um, if you're looking for more SIBO esoteric products that are probably never going to trade a day in their lives but are theoretically interesting, they just announced 10 more. Uh, for you today. So get ready, all your fans out there of GVZ and everything else. The first one is uh, the S&P multi-week buy right index. Uh, so it's going to include weeklies in the BXM, essentially, uh, oh, which yeah. kind of makes sense. Uh, then uh, number two is a one-week... So it's going to be right. like, it'll call it 25%. <laughs> They, they actually talked about this. They're going to do a cons RMC. consecutive, consecutive four-week, so the whole strip. Yeah, yeah. you know, if you listen to uh, Option Insider, um, the, the, the interviews. interviews, we uh, sat down with Bill Spath and he talked about these different indexes on yes. uh, in detail. If you want to hear the guy that basically is responsible for listing them, go to theoptioninsider.com and go. listen to, Check to out my, interview, my interview with Bill Spath. <laughs> um, was Mark just self-promoting again? Actually, it was my stuff, so I don't mind it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, four-week strip, so that, that's an interesting approach. And the put right, one-week put right is kind of straightforward. Four-week strip, isn't that a club in Vegas? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, one, uh, so, so if, put, if put didn't get you excited, W put will, of course, get you excited because that's a one-week uh, one put. Then they have a zero-cost put spread collar index. Uh, holds a long position index, the S&P, on a monthly basis, and then buys a 25 to 5% out of the index 
put options, spread, and sells an out-of-the-money call to fully cover the cost of the spread. So there you go. I mean, these uh, must be – they must be inventing these. They're, so they're, that they're just really – so people can benchmark against yes. and actually use They're literally use. throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. The number four, Jared will like this, the Iron Condor Index. Uh, so that, I'm surprised it's taken this long to launch that. <laughs> An Iron Condor yes, Index? Yes, that's crazy. Uh, that's, they have, Iron Butterfly Index? They have the whole index? methodology here, listeners. They'll take all day to read it out oh, for you. Geez. A delta of approximately 0.15 on the put, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here's an Iron Butterfly, a little bit closer to home for me, because yeah. you know, we all know an Iron Iron. Iron Condor is an iron butterfly for cowards. And uh, let's, that's B-F-L-Y. In the garden of Sibo, <laughs> baby. So that is... <laughs> Spot. Don't you know that I love your index? This one may intrigue you guys a little more over at Typhon. <laughs> the SIBO VIX Strangle Index is number six. Uh, it's designed as a premium capture index overlay short uh, volatility call and put options with a capped long VIX call position. Uh, and the collateralized by fixing the number of strangles to so 80% of the capital is reserved. Uh, number seven, covered combo index. We were talking about that before. That's kind of interesting. You don't see a lot of uh, that. The kind of OCC is doing something like this, too. They're trying to uh, promote covered combos more than just, you know, collars and things because they want to get people to have a little bit of sexier, a little bit juice up the returns a little bit more. Uh, here's a 5% protection index. So if you want to, I guess, clip your protection of 5%. Uh, another nine is a 30 delta buy right index. Interesting. So they're doing so that basically that's much more similar to like BX, kind of a in between BXM because BXM is at the money, right? Or BXM up to like 2% is 2% or something is, like no, that. No, BXM yeah. is the first strike out of the money, mm. and then BXY is 2% out of the money. So this is more close to what a lot, yeah, of, and, a lot and, of advisors and, will do, they'll roll it out. Of the and money. you know, Russell and I have written a couple of white papers on BXY and, and put, and the one thing we found was BXM was relative to put and BXY kind of worthless. Yes. Um, but the but the thirty delta buy right actually says you know we'll go a little bit out of the money, but not, but based on volatility instead of based on just you know stupid two percent. Yeah, do it the way a lot of a lot of advisors do it, which they give themselves a little bit of room for the underlying to rally. That's why they actually have the underlying to begin with. Indeed. Uh, and then number ten is a conditional buy right index on the on the S and P. Uh, designed to track the performance of a yield enhancement strategy that holds a long position and sells a monthly at the money call. Uh, the written number of call will either be a half unit or one unit will be determined by the level of SIBO volatility, of VIX. So they're going to underwrite or overwrite depending on the level of the VIX. Oh, that's geez. that's well, and, interesting. And now we could actually be the, the out of conditional buy right <laughs> index here at, at Option Block. <laughs> Uh, that's an interesting one. So yeah. there you go. If you were, if you, if GVZ wasn't filling your quota of things that, that are interesting just... and never trade, here's ten more. I, I, what would you wager that a contract ever flows through no, any no, one of those? None of those 10? are going to trade. They're going to be like indexes that SIBO uses to try and get people to trade more SPX. Well, the, B, the BXM the may, the BXM, the BXM weekly BXM may. Weekly that won't that the, again, just like BXM. It'll be disseminated. People yeah. will look at that. People will look at that thirty delta index, and there'll be there'll be covered call guys, you know that, you know issue use that as their benchmark and you know if you're if you're developing an index like these the idea is you get people to benchmark i heard two of those that, that people will actually benchmark a couple of those are interesting. so i can imagine a lot of advisors pushed back at so them saying i don't want to write bill, add the money all day so long. bill is uh bad well, that, that could bob, be a lot of work about as well as bob euchre on, on those <laughs> indexes <laughs> all right and that's going to do it for 200. the trading block and now without further ado we're going to keep on rolling right on into the odd block It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Welcome back to the Odd Block. This is indeed the portion of the program where we break down what's moving, what's shaking, what's lighting up uh, the old tape from an unusual activity perspective. First up on the Odd Block, we've got a newcomer. We used to we have talked about craft before, but not uh, Mondelez here, ticker symbol MDLZ. I was trading right around five, 45 bucks today when we started writing it up. This is the name that does, oh, about 11,000 contracts a day, and today was just lighting it up. To the tune of nearly 83,000 contracts today, so a lot of love for this one. What, what caught our eye out here was, uh, looks like a bit of a, a ratio vertical slash roll, call it what you will. Uh, the SEP 42-45 vertical going up for 340 on the 42s, 
and 45 going up for a buck 35, 6,000 by 9,000 times when we first started profiling it. Uh, the open interest, pretty sizable on the 42s, 13,000 contracts. Didn't go up mark spread, so we can wave our fingers at them. Uh, but it did post at the same time. The SEP 42s looks like they were coming in, paper selling uh, to close and uh, stepping up pretty significantly, again, by about half, by 50% or so, uh, up on the 45s. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, our guests notwithstanding, what's your, uh, what's your take here on this? Looks like a bit of a uh, adjusting slash roll. Uh, we had earnings this morning in this name, too, so there was some moving and shaking in this name today. Yeah, it, it traded a 52-week high today, so somebody likes. I don't know, what does Kraft make anymore? Hot dogs? All that delicious mac and cheese. No, no, oh, so, mac and cheese? so Kraft the is now foods? owned by Heinz. Because uh, Warren Buffett bought it, and right, it was a merger, a merger of equals, but not really. Um, and Mondelez was their former snacking, so I think that includes Keebler. So uh, those of you that enjoy those, uh, you remember those elf-shaped those cookies with the elves? chocolate on the back? Oh, sorry, tasty elf crackers. Sorry. So yeah, we uh, so they make like uh, the, all the snacking, all the Keebler things, any anything that's like I think Cheez-Its maybe Mondelez. So I'll, they, possibly. Wait, they wait for the, un, unlike traders, they wait for their cheese to mature. So <laughs> I was going to move on before, you, is never before you say something else you're going to regret. Let's I, anyway, on. anyway, I think it was a house money roll up. Seems like it. The earnings came out. They were liking it. They were taking some of that money, putting it to work on. Uh, and to they say, went up, uh, you like it on the 42 strike, you got to love it at 45, right? And, and, and double went, down because you got some money in your pocket. Exactly. Why not? Exactly. Why not? That's what I saw. Swing that. for the fences. Go big or go home. Yep. Somebody's swinging big. And our friends here, happy to oblige them along the way there. Uh, all right. <laughs> and moving on to our, our next name here. This is another, I believe, another newcomer to the iBlock. Uh, this is ServiceNow, Inc., ticker symbol now. So an appropriate ticker. We always, we always give them extra points for that. Uh, trading today right around, oh, 78 half or so on this one, near the top of their one-year range. It's a name that does about oh, about 1,700 contracts a day, doing 6,600 today. So pretty sizable paper for this uh, relatively small name. Uh, what we caught our eye in particular out here were a little bit closer to home here on the AUG expiration cycle. The AUG 75s uh, going up for $4.30. 2,300 times, uh, going up one block on the Philly. We also did see some stock going up, uh, about 150-odd thousand contracts going up, or shares going up for about uh, 77, 80. Pretty close, uh, pretty close to Delta neutral. So it looks like it could be one of those nice all-in-ones. Put some yield in your pocket for a rainy day, sir, and then uh, come back and collect it all when it goes your way. Now, this is the, the group that does those now. Now, that's what I call music. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> every, every, every three months where you buy the CD. They buy the kids, the kids yeah. bop and all that no, stuff. No, well, you buy the CD, and it's got Taylor Swift and Maroon 5 on it and, you know, who else? You know, all those bands. All the CDs that you have in your car right now. Well, right? no. It, <laughs> so, Mr. Rock Lobster, what, what do you think? I, I'm, I'm package buy right? Is, this is a package buy right looking for some yield to August, uh, happy with the high price. But being aggressive with the strike. That's what it that's what it that's what it smells like. Kind of thematic. We kinda had a light up a theme for the odd block this year. A lot of it is just looking for new ways to capture yield. Of course you still have your at least thirty percent of them just swinging for the fences on some crazy call somewhere. But the other probably at least a third are out there trying to harvest yield, yield in some weird esoteric fashion on a name where they're rolling out six months for a dime and they're <laughs> and they're happy to do it for some reason. Yeah, seventy five dollar stock. Yeah. Selling a four dollar call against itself. Not bad. A little bit That's in the money. Terrible. I think there were there were seventy five. So there's a little bit of a, a little bit a little bit of juice on those. We but, actually uh, spent some time looking at uh, Twitter buy rights today. Ah, I'm sure those and were we had a, well, those were rich and rewarding. Super rich. We had a we had a student, a student who has thus turned into a professional trader, um, point out that you could do a Twitter eight day buy right and collect one percent in eight days. Basically, amounted to a fifty percent return over. Over a, a one-year lifespan, so eight days. Wow. Yeah, eight-day buy rate returning one percent. That's that's actually uh, that's pretty rich. And it, it was it was at the thirty-two strike, right? Or the thirty? It was at the thirty-two half strike, so it was a, a it was a buck and a half out of the money. So five percent out of the money, and you're getting one percent every eight days. So a fifty percent yield. That's got a little bit of a current day fluff in it. Though. I'm sure if you you can't really annualize that out to. Uh, I don't think you can hope to get these vol levels yeah, but throughout it, it the year. Sounded good. If you could, it sounds that sounds really good though. I, I agree there's, with you. I'll there's sign nothing me up better. For that. There's nothing better than a current yes, day fluff. Yes. Yes. 
There we go. Let's, uh, again, move on to our final name here. You're going to get us booted from every, every po- no, AHA Mobile won't list us anymore. You wanna There's to nowhere to go There's nowhere but to go, up but at this point. Yes. All right. Let, let's, he said it first. Let's let me wrap, be very clear. Let's wrap it up here. Calls uh, Nokia, this kind of remnant name, uh, still floating around, trading about 7 bucks today. Actually, we're rallying a bit today, up about nearly 50 cents at one point today. Uh, so it was a banner day in Nokia terms. Uh, they had earnings this morning, and so the stock was moving quite a bit. Uh, this is the name that does oh, about 8,000, 8,500 contracts a day, doing 42,000 today. So lighten it up pretty significantly, including about half of that coming in this one Pretty substantial call close, call buy, call it what you will. The Oc 8's going up for 12 cents when we started profiling them 23,590 times. Uh, that initial kind went up in two blocks on the ISC. Uh, Caper pretty much lifting the offer on these things. So it looks like our friend could be could have be taking uh, what's left of his overwrite and just taking it off the table here. Uh, it flirted up pretty high, but didn't get didn't really endanger that eight strike. So maybe our friend here decided. Uh, take off to short before it, it decides to keep going through I, that I, eight handle. Yeah, it definitely is either close or I'm trying to figure out what does Nokia have left. They sold their phone business, okay? <coughs> They're selling their map business. What What's left? They have a, I guess Nokia they got something. A, Nokia has a map business? I think they sold the map business to Uber. They have a map business? I think yeah, so. They bought a, ma- yeah. bought a map business in 08. Oh, good. That's actually, you know, sounds like a <laughs> oh, worthwhile good. thing. Oh, the sale to Microsoft was good, though, on the phone business. Oh, jeez. They just written it, written it all off already. They probably have some, like, finished board game division or something like that they still have left at home somewhere. I don't know what else they still make. A finished version of Monopoly. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe like they still have the international rights, some of these phones in, like, South Africa or something. Who knows? They make phones so for a lot of regions that we don't know. So what is Microsoft doing with the Nokia phone division? Are they just they're, just, they're just rebranding they're just them Windows Mobile phones for now. So you can buy a Nokia phone that pretty much has Microsoft on it now. Or Windows Mobile or whatever. So uh, I think either closing. All right, I'm gonna look at the open interest tomorrow. Get okay, somebody. I don't know what kind of growth Nokia could have to even make the eight. Yeah, they, they <laughs> it rallied like ten percent today. So remember when that was so, like the someone likes the, it. Remember when it was like the biggest snake. Phone that anybody snake cool was the could biggest own. thing on the planet. Snake. I mean, it was like the, yeah. I mean, you look at it. We you know we were having a discussion with uh, one of our students, and he was talking about one of the things that kills technology companies is that they're software engineers who are these mathy people figure out that they're set for life and basically say, yeah, I'm good, and, and just stop. And it feels like that's what hit Motorola after they got the Razor. It feels like that's what hit Nokia after they invented really the mobile phone in Europe. And uh, you know, there, there's very few companies, basically in order to buy the motivated, motivated people, you have to be one of the, my, my take is you have to be one of the top 10 in, in, in Silicon Valley in order to and basically pay people through the roof uh, to, uh, to, to stay or you know or you get your other smart people from Silicon Valley to move to Seattle by chance and uh, but, but you know it was an interesting thing and, and then and it was not something that had dawned on me in the past so I, it's one of those things I'm going to really watch for as a trader going forward is I'm going to try and find these companies where you know they really hit it big they hit it out of the park the valuation goes through the roof. They have to stay to divest. Yeah, they, it's part to, of Silicon Valley, they, isn't it? They, they have to sit yeah. around waiting I'm to read vest. The aver- average, yes. average divesture <laughs> duration, and I'm going to short the bananas out of the, ba- the back end of that. Uh, those guys just sitting around in the break room waiting to vest yeah. in Silicon do Valley. We all, yeah, do we all think a, that sounds like a decent strategy? What do great, we think? Everybody you sell it. raise your hand. The, la- the lazy vesting strategy. There we all go. Right, we've got a, Keep. All right, we've got a seller. <laughs> Keep those hands up because we're going to be diving into some uh, some mail block pretty soon. So if you guys have question, live questions, now would be the time to get those ready. Uh, without further ado, though, we're going to close out the odd block. Thank you for that, Mr. Uh, Rock Lobster, and for what little Mr. Uh, C. Bass contributed. Also, thank you. Uh, as we keep rolling now into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. 
Welcome to the Mail Block. This is indeed the portion of the program where you guys get to join us here on the old All-Star panel, make your questions or comments known. Uh, this is usually the portion where you could tweet in, shoot us an email, questions at theoptionsinsider.com, or post a comment on the website. No shortage of ways for you guys to do just that, but we also have a live audience today, so we're going to give them a chance to uh, chime in, make their questions or comments known here on the show. And while they're thinking of questions, we'll do some pretty quick, easy ones here at the top of the show. we got one here from, uh, um, I'm not sure, Beach It. Beach it 454. Uh, he or she writes, hey, do you guys stop the Odd Block show? I haven't heard it since last Friday, and I'm not sure what they're referring to. Obviously, this show has the Odd Block on it. Maybe they're referring to Options Oddities. I did check, though, and that show has been posting like regular, so I'm not sure what they're referring to. Mr. or Mrs. Beach it, check the feed. It has updated if you're missing it, but this is, I think he's confusing Options Oddities and the Odd Block, uh, in which case... I have one yeah. fan. What that means you do have is one fan. I have one fan. What he was fan. saying is he was missing He was missing one you. One fan. Hey. And he misses He me. was missing you. He's like, I haven't heard Andrew in a while. By the way, I was in the chat room today at TD. They were missing you today. So there was a lot of, oh, there's a lot of love for uh, the great. Rock Lobster in there. He's great. Yeah. If, if, you want, if you're not a, uh, an option subscriber and you want to get a chance to talk to Andrew on a regular basis, which you are lucky to do so, um, you know, one of the, Andrew doesn't like to pump himself very much, but he basically taught everybody at – Group One Trading, which is the second largest market making firm in the world, uh, independent market making firm in the world, uh, how to trade. And uh, so, you know, I always joke that he's the guy that taught the guy that taught me how to trade options. And so, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people understand so what they're he's getting. He's to blame. Yeah, no, I, I don't think a lot of people understand what they're it's getting when they actually my get, fault. To, uh, get to go to the trading room that, that, he's, that he's bringing. I mean, no, I agree get, for free. Go to, yeah. go to TD. We've got a and, deal uh, for and you. And listen to him for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and you can bug him. You could jazz him. You can ask him questions. Now, all kinds of fun stuff. You're not going to get all the, all the healthy gems that you get from You won't. From, you won't get all your pearls pit. of wisdom. Speaking of pearls of wisdom, we got a good, good uh, educational-oriented question here from VVC18. They write, hey, what's the worst beginner options trade in your opinion? Buying out-of-the-money calls hoping for a pop or selling out-of-the-money puts betting that the stock won't drop. Matt and Mike, I know you guys are, are mostly futures guys, but uh, I'll give you a chance to chime in here first since you are our special guest. If someone was to come to you, they were a new options trader, what would you caution them away from the most? Obviously, the put could leave the most lasting mark against them, but the call over time is not going to do that great for them either. So, Yeah, I mean, in general, not knowing this particular person's financial condition, I'd say if you're, if you're paying anything for premium, it's probably... Uh, you know, there's options to be sold. And there's options to be not sold. Ah, if that's, I see you, uh, you fall into that camp. <laughs> yeah. The seller, not sell. The Don Schlesinger camp of, of oh, trading. He's an acolyte. Yes. Yeah. Don will be happy to hear that. He's going to be cited in upstate New York or wherever he is right now. Yeah, I would just uh, chime in that the uh, underlying is a huge uh, factor there that was left out. Um, mm -hmm. If you're... Our listeners like to make it hard for us by being yeah, very right. vague in general. Just buy what any, fun is any specifics? call on anything. Right. Um, Kind of to echo Mike's sentiments, um, you know, buying any kind of long volatility exposure over time has generally been a loser, um, especially in an instrument like the XX that that rolls oh, yes. that rolls uh, uh, volatility futures forward. It's a it's a tough call there. It, would you say it's a tough call? <laughs> that's Literally why, that's and why figuratively. I said that. that's, yeah, I was waiting for you. I was like, <laughs> waiting for you to chime in on it. So don't so, buy calls on VXX. Yeah, buy, you have no idea the number of people that uh, that will buy like buy try and buy and hold double x it is like there's a reason why it's double x you ever, you ever seen like the old cartoons where it says double x on the on thing what happens to the people that drink that they die or they get really really drunk and uh e either either solution is is bad well one, one's not as bad but <laughs> yes. Death and drinking are, so are the, the, equal. The, in the most eyes. important thing about that question is risk versus what you're trying to put on. Right. And ultimately, you're going to buy a call out of the money most of the time, unless you're really, really smart or really, really lucky. Statistically, you're going to lose. Statistically, if you sell a put, for the most part, if it's out of the money enough, you'll probably win. However, it could leave a tire track all over your mind for the next 20 years if you're incorrect about it. So, you know, that's really what it is. Are they both stupid? You know, and like any trade, to me, I'm a student of conditionality. So it's the condition fits the trade and you've got to, it's not like I'm just going to be a call buyer all the time. I, I don't think that's really the path to riches. Uh, you certainly could get lucky and be right and make money, but uh, either one at an appropriate time is probably the right thing. And that's what, of course, 
options education is for. Exactly. I just plug myself. There you go. Yeah, you know, I, I would I would add to Andrew's sentiment. I mean, uh, you know, we've Russell and I have written this put index, this put right index uh, study that you can get at Oshpit. Just look up Oshpit white paper on put, P U T, and what we find is selling puts near the money outperforms the S and P over a twenty five year period, flat out. So there's nothing wrong with selling puts. What what where where beginners get caught is they sell out of the money puts, and then get assigned, and instead of cutting losses, they hang on to the stock, yeah. hoping... But I wanted go, the stock at this it'll, level. It'll come I back. It. I, 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 got four, I got four letters for you. S-H-L-D. No. All right? <laughs> and, and the answer is, it may not come back. All right? So, um, you know, generally speaking, I don't have an issue with selling puts. I, I, I love buying calls. I buy calls all the time. But... You buy calls and things you think are going to go up. You sell puts and things you won't, you think won't go down. Um, be strategic. Be don't be stupid. And really, educate yourself. And and you know you can get to a certain extent. I mean, I really feel like you can educate yourself enough in the free world, all the free stuff, to stop yourself from losing money, um, making money without. Get, Bringing people in like ourselves, and I feel like I, I'm sorry. This has been said. I'm not. I swear. You I'm are. Not, at, you are at your shuckster. own event, so I'll, not, I'll, I'll allow shuckster, you to shill your own stuff a little I'm not, bit. I'm not a shuckster, but but um, you know, you can educate yourself pretty much for free to not lose money. It's it it becomes increasingly more difficult to educate yourself to make money, and I think that you know it, it can be done. People can do it. Um, you know, you trade enough, you, there's a cost somewhere, right? You can pay Andrew to teach you how to make money, or you can pay in losing money for a year and then finally figuring it out. Six and one half dozen the other, we think we're cheaper. There you go. Cheaper than Generally, losing money for a I'm, year. I'm That's known, a good marketing slogan. I'm known for being Option cheap. Pit. Cheaper than losing money for well, a well, year. You know like that Mark that. is our chief marketing officer yes, as true. well as founder of OptionPit.com. Let's turn now to some of the people who are utilizing that knowledge. If you guys want to take a, we have more questions here, but I want to give you guys a, a chance. If you have any, All right. uh, now is your now is your chance to. Who, who's got a question? Speak up or shut up. Forever hold your peace. All right, we're gonna just yell it loud, on. and we'll we'll restate it into the microphone well, if you want. It's, it's, it's more of a, a follow-up. Oh yeah, here go ahead. You can speak in, speak in this microphone right here. There you go. So so you may remember this uh, this. Stock. Lean in a little bit. Domtar, ticker UFS. That was featured several months ago. I do. I know Andrew remembers. We go through quite a few of them, but so, it's, it is so, ringing a bit of a bell. Uh, yes. A market maker who who wishes to remain anonymous uh, traded in Domtar, and I have it on good authority that, that what happened kind of went along these lines. The straddle was ninety cents at the mid on the screen. A broker came into the pit, <coughs> looking to pay a dollar fifty for straddles. Okay, sixty cents of edge sold. It's always sell a, you a moderate amount. A scary sign that something is afoot. <laughs> Danger. I have to go to lunch now. Danger. Excuse me. Danger. Danger. Ten. I have to go. So, so naturally, what happens next? Now it's a dollar. Two bucks. Yeah. yeah. Guy runs the vol up fifteen points. Wow. A couple hours later, it's a dollar eighty bid. Oh, that's even better. Let's let's sell a few more. Just a few. Come in the next day. Broker's out looking for really as many as he can get, 250. Oh, wow. And insatiable electronic. I'm demand. getting cold just sweats like, just hearing this story. <laughs> I'm having nightmares. Continuously all over lifting again. the oh. offers, lifting offers, lifting offers, lifting offers. At this point, the market maker becomes concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, a good dollar in his face. Uh, eh, you know, reasonably sized position. Difficult to trade, wide markets, can't really hedge it off very easily. I did not teach him how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of edge. Um, and, uh, you know, so it turned out that Andrew knew a little bit about this, and there was a show where you talked about we did, yes. a call sweeper in this name. Uh, so this person went back, thought about that, looked at what had happened, uh, bought a lot of deltas uh, because it, uh, it kind of felt like the straddle buyer maybe, although that was an untied straddle, maybe was doing stock one up on the side, so doing 
calls. Uh, lo and behold, you know, three weeks later, the news hits. Domtar is considering turning itself into a master limited partnership. The stock jumps three or four bucks. And the person whose position had been massively underwater unloaded all the deltas. Stock settles you. back down, straddle pins at expiration. Really? Wow. So it rarely well, works that well. That, yeah, that's. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, feel, I'm, I feel good. I, I did teach him. I'm sorry. I did. So, I'm sorry. As a happy sorry. ending after all. Well, my, my first piece would be on on a, a trade like that. Um, I've been. I was personally borderline put out of business by a trade that seemed that good on the first on the first trade. And if somebody comes in and wants to pay. Basically, through the offer, um, do small and wait because vol will move. So, uh, you know, that, that lift of the dollar fifty offer, right? You sell t 25 or 15 or 10 straddles. You know, if that is the end of the order, you're going to make a lot of money selling the 140 and the 130 and the 120. It's never, it's never the all, end of the order, though. All the way back to 190. <laughs> all the way down, it's always back, the beginning of the order. All the way order. back to 90 cents. All right. So, and this is something that I really didn't figure out. It, it took me a long time to figure that how, out really how to, how to price my sizing and how to size my, how to size all of that. Size stuff your pricing. And size my pricing. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, if that happens, one, kind of look for the, the broker may or may not wink. All right, which is always a good thing. Um, not that that's... Yeah, that, those days are gone, I'm <laughs> afraid. That's the winking broker. You can't really rely yeah. on that much anymore. <laughs> on, your, is, on your screen there is a no little winky icon. There are no coughing in the background. Yeah. They, the problem is they, they used to give you a wink with the... They used to show you the eye Say, that Say, go winks. to lunch now. now. They used to show you the eye that winks. Now they show you the eye that stinks. <laughs> um, and... Um, <laughs> Actually, I just used to ask, is this the smart one or the dumb one? He's like, smart one. This is the smart one. <laughs> and, and so, so um, you know, the point is, on an order like that that's so through your market, um, doing it, it as tempting as it is to unload, like really give it to them. Um, do smaller and be happier selling the 140s and the 130s because – You'll make more money selling a a dollar thirty straddle coming from a buck fifty, than you ever will selling a dollar fifty straddle coming from ninety cents, and so just think about the pricing in that respect. Could, could, kudos to that trader for listening to the odd block, and realizing that the guy who does the only guy who trades this is always right. Um, but uh, you know that's that's one of the things I would really say. Uh, advise that that market maker is probably relatively new based on how that went down um you know allow <laughs> oh my gosh yeah oh my science <laughs> don't uh, hurt the clients so on the radio <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about so um so i i would that would be my thing is is do as little as you possibly can and then the time you really want to unload, once the broker wants to do a piece of the business as well, that is the time to step in and sell. So when Goldman comes in and they want to buy as many calls from you as they can, 10 lot, 10 lot, 10 lot, 10 lot. When Goldman comes in and they want to buy as many calls as they can, but or they want to buy 10,000 calls and they want 9,000 of them, Jump over everybody else you possibly can to get as much of that order as you can because that's the top. So until, especially on an order like that, until and I'm guessing at a certain point the broker bought brought in paper that want, he wanted to do himself as well. And yeah, the dollar fifty contact. Yeah. <laughs> crap. Surprise. Don't help. Um, so. Get him, get him. Um, get him back, get him back. Well, you know, I'm assuming uh, my guess is that that broker drummed up from market makers and not from smart paper, um, if there was. But um, wait, you know, especially on something that through the market, allow that one to trade, do it small, really small, and then watch what happens. Because I've always, I've never had a, I've never had 
a really good experience sans once where um, something completely threw my market worked in my favor. Now, the one time that did work in my favor, I made like a million and a half dollars. But all the other times, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Great, great live questions. That was a good little, uh, a little anecdote, yeah. a live anecdote. Yeah, any, anybody fun. else have any questions? Looking around. Going once. Everybody going in the twice. room now is now frightened yeah. to ask yeah, a question. Yeah, no one wants to ask anymore. <laughs> uh, that was good. All that of a sudden, stuff. they went that. from happy yeah. people to yeah. just panicked faces. I think they were still a little nervous when that story started going that it was going Please to end Please don't ask me a question. Please horribly. don't ask me a question, I feel like Mark the teacher at the, front of, at the front of the class like, no, you have to talk. Uh, no, we'll, we'll let you off the hook. That was good. That was a good anecdote. Instead, we'll keep on rolling into our final segment. It's time for Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, and welcome to Around the Block. This is indeed the portion of the program where we break down uh, what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of the week into the weekend. Uh, there still are some earnings if you're playing the earnings the rest of this week. Of course, you have Exxon tomorrow, uh, SIBO before the Open tomorrow. That'll be interesting to see how all this VIX paper, or perhaps lack thereof of late, uh, yeah, will impact the earnings. That, do you think that SIBO is going to send that one-by-two guy at, like a big thank you that, that day, like, that day, yeah. Like, dear one-by-two he, guy. He's the entirety of the volume. We love you. You, you are our favorite person. I don't know if you if you guys heard last time, Matt and Mike, but they last time they had earnings, it didn't work out so well. They blamed the VIX futures term structure. They said it's not it's not as first I've ever heard on the analyst call that the term structure wasn't steep enough for them to essentially have the profit they usually expected. So they'll deep they'll, they'll dig deep for some good excuses. We'll see what they come up with for tomorrow. We also have uh, Chevron uh, tomorrow as well. And uh, since you guys are our guests, I'll, I'll give you pride of place once more here. What what are you guys watching for the rest of this week into the weekend? What's keep, what are you keeping an eye on? What are you waiting to to pull triggers on out there? Are you kicking any VIX cans these days? Any, any, any mullet trades setting up? Yes. Uh, yeah, no mullet trades right now, but we did have a new code name for you. The Tulum is the reverse Tulum. mullet. Oh, <laughs> So it's well, mullet spelled backwards. There we uh, go. There are times when we're long front and short the back, so. <laughs> <laughs> the Tulum. <laughs> the Tulum. <laughs> I like it. You guys, at the very least, good code names, good brand names. Right, like right. It. right. What are yeah. you guys watching at the pit for the rest of this week here? I mean, you know, trading on the index level is more macro, so confusion over what uh, the, the Greeks are going to do, if they're going to have kind of a confidence vote with the Syriza party on Sunday, or if they're going to punt until September to have that same confidence vote. So there's still the Greek stuff is still in the background now. Moved off the front page. It's a little bit third page now of the news. And, uh, you know, Given what the Fed said yesterday, I think jobs report next week will be, there'll be a little more nervousness around the jobs report. So, um, you know, for us, it's more macro mm. because we're index traders. So, yeah, jobs starting to have some impact again. For a while, there are things like non farms that kind of seem like they had just been priced out of the market. Then all of a sudden, bam. Yeah, not, for a while. Everyone woke up to the fact that they can move the market again. For a while, non farms was like a can't lose trade, right? If it was too weak, no, uh, no raising rates forever, too strong. That means the economy is doing great. <clears throat> now I think it's a little more rubber meets the road. You know, strong jobs will be important. Maybe risk off if job, jobs are too strong. But uh, so that's what we're looking at for the next week. Great. What are you guys keeping an eye on for the rest of this week? Um, well, besides uh, I'm uh, besides flying back to Maine tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I uh, when uh, you know when. What are you gonna do with all this big city living around you? You're gonna be going crazy in the woods. I don't know. In the hinterlands with the crickets and the stars <laughs> and the and birds. The fishing. <laughs> oh dear! I heard that from the background. Uh, well, you know when you have the guy running the big volatility product, you know it's kind of playing Sudoku. Is like I don't think anything's happening yeah. tomorrow. I, I'm gonna tend to go to the power, and the power says not much is gonna happen for the rest of the week. So. Probably not. Uh, you know, next week, yeah, we'll look for some numbers and see That'll what happens. That'll make for a scintillating ball views tomorrow, then, sir. Uh, exactly. We you know, will be scintillating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see Exxon and, and Chevron. Um, two days ago, I would have said buy every call option you can when they when uh, Chevron was trading at a five-year low, or yeah, five-year low. Uh, Exxon Mobil was at a four-year low. And I, I would have said they were basically at the lows. Exxon Mobil was at the lows of the Greek crisis. Chevron was at the lows of the 2011 crisis. So 
Um, I would have said buy every every single freaking call you can, and then they rallied, um, you know, in a good good three four percent. So um, it'd be interesting where that goes. SIBO, uh, that one by two, and that 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 this Greek thing has been, I'll bet you, very good for them. So they will probably blow things out of the water. They're, in, they're you know, one of the things that's interesting about SIBO is they're kind of like like the the dumb guy stock hedge. Because unlike gold, SIBO, SIBO actually makes money when the market sells off, a lot of money when the market sells off, plus they actually have a, a dividend. So for those of you that are gold investors, I would look at SIBO yeah, stock. They increase their dividend, I think, too. Uh, yeah, I would look at SIBO stock and say that's a far better investment for me in the market crashing than gold, uh, especially GLD people. Because um, you know, you're going to get a dividend, and... When the market falls apart, SIBO stocks at a minimum going to stay and coming out of it probably rally way harder than their balance in the market. Yeah, we'll see how they report tomorrow. I'll be right. That one by two guy, he, if he hasn't already, he should get a nice, nice thank you card. Oh, yeah. Perhaps no, they, an old, a nice old I, first I believe stop he's sweater. getting a fruitcake and yes. an old style. Yes. They, the they, sent him, yes. they, sent him, they sent him a box of Allen Brothers. It was really yeah, nice it was, of him. It was lovely. It's very, it's very much, much like my lawyer. You spent millions and millions of dollars. Here's four Allen Brothers steaks. That's a very nice guy. All right, and that's going to do it for the Around the Block segment. It's also going to do it that that. for this special live edition of uh, the Option Block program. But before we go, as always, let me check in really quickly with each of my cohorts here. See what they have cook cooking up. Matt and Mike, you were kind enough to sit in with us the whole time. So listeners want to know more about what you guys are cooking up over there. The mullet, the what was it, Tulum? Tulum. Tulum, Tulum the mullet. <laughs> the kick the can, all the other strategies you have over there. Where should they go? What should they do? Uh, you can check us out on the web at uh, www. How many W's did I just say? <laughs> Typhoncap.com. And uh, we're the Proteus Dynamic Volatility Strategy. There you go. Check it out. And you guys, Option Pit, what's cooking over there aside from the year? They already missed your big, uh, epic professional trader palooza. So what else can they look forward to? You know, uh, one, we'll get back to writing the blog tomorrow. Uh, and two, um, we're going to be doing, we'll be doing a free webinar in a couple months. Um, go to our, you know, search Option Pit on YouTube. I post all of the free webinars and kind of our AM volatility report that we do on YouTube. It, it's worth checking out. I, I don't post a bunch of junk. And then um, finally, uh, trackthetrade.com. You can see, follow my CBOE TV show. And uh, there's a free like 40-part course that will soon be a six-part course uh, on there that you can sign up for. I will rewrite it. Yeah, Andrew's going to rewrite it. That's and, what we uh, do on the plain so, home domain. So, yeah, if you want to check out my, my CBO TV show where we, uh, I execute trades and, and follow them from start to finish, go to uh, trackthetrade.com, and you can, you can see my, uh, my, my mug on, on, on the Internet TV. Or just save yourself the pain and just listen to the shows because that makes it a lot less painful than, uh, than looking at him every day. But whatever, whatever, your, oh. whatever floats your boat. I love seeing you in person. You know it. All right. And that's going to do it for the Around the Block segment. That's also all the time we have for this episode of the show. On behalf of Mark and Andrew and both of, uh, of the Typhon team over here, I want to thank everybody who downloaded and streamed and subscribed. And, of course, for sending in such great questions, including our live anecdote here. And we'll see you guys next time for another edition of the Option Block.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.